Welcome to Science Summer Safari Family and Teacher Expeditions. We're here on the edge of Morgan Rose State Forest for today's expedition, which is a beautiful hike and a creek walk. Now, Morgan Rose State Forest is the second state forest in Indiana. Before the settlers came into Indiana, our state was covered 90% by hardwood forests. In fact, a squirrel could jump from one end of the state almost all the way across without ever coming down to the ground. But when settlers came and we had more population in Indiana, the trees were cut down, the houses were built, the roads, wood was a big thing. And we forgot about our forests. It wasn't until about 150 years ago that people started noticing that that 90% of forest was down to about 10% of forest in Indiana. There was a man by the name of Charles C. Deem, who was made the first forester of the state of Indiana. And he set aside and started setting aside forest that we could have for a sustained forestry industry. Now, he also brought in the, the first tax break for farmers and people to plant trees and they would not have to pay taxes on the land. Since then, our forests have been growing in population and percentages across the state. We're up to about 20% thanks to places like Morgan Monroe State Forest. They do a lot of planting and a lot of education. We're here at Bryant Creek. Make sure when we're finished, you check out the fire station and more things to do here in the forest. Hey, are we ready? Got my bug spray, got my hand lens. I got shoes that are probably gonna get wet. Let's get started. Your expedition starts at the bottom of the hill from the shelter. And so uh, this is Bryant Lake. And Bryant Lake is a beautiful small lake. What makes a lake a lake and a pond a pond is that there is a vegetation zone that goes through the whole bottom of it. If the lake is deep, the sun won't get to it. A pond is usually shallower and you'll have plants growing all the way across. You see Justin here, he's checking out a plant that grows right on the bank. This is called arrowhead plant. The leaves look like an arrowhead, but if you dig up the tubers, there's these little white potato-like looking things that were a staple of Native Americans. When you're on the bank here, take some time to look for the fish. There are small minnows called star-headed minnows. There's red ear sunfish, bluegill, largemouth bass, and even some catfish in here. One of the favorite things I like to look for is a little bit further down here, if you look over, especially by that evergreen tree, you look down in the water and you can see some sunfish on nests. You'll see one or two fish guarding this little round area that they cleaned out and probably laid a thousand eggs in it. There's a lot of things to see. Take some time if you have your net or your hand lens, explore this area. You'll probably see some dragonflies and some damselflies. And a good way to tell the difference, when a dragonfly lands, its wings are straight out. When a damselfly lands, its wings are folded back. Keep your eye out, use your guides, a great place to start. We're gonna continue this trail and we're gonna head this way around the low side of the lake. If you look behind me, that big ridge over there, that's the high side of the lake. There's a trail that goes almost all the way around this lake. The high side is dry and steep. The low side is wet, a bit muddy. We're headed this way. As you head this way along the trail, keep your eye out for signs like this. Here's a beech tree. It's also called the, you know, the Indiana lover's tree because people carve their initials on it. My opinion is I love this tree how it is not with its carvings on it. You can also feel the leaves. The leaves feel like they're kind of sandy, and that's how I remember it. it's a beech tree and a smooth bark like the beech. But something's done this. Any idea who's been chewing on this? <laughs> no, not Justin. Uh, Justin doesn't have the teeth for it. This is a sign that beaver live here in Bryant Lake. You'll see this, and behind me a stump. As you walk the trails, look for signs of wildlife, including where the beaver have chewed down trees to either block or dam up the lake or to pull in to make their den or to eat. And also don't stumble over them because it will hurt if you fall on one of these. We're gonna head this way 
towards the kind of the muddy area. Get ready for some wet feet. Uh, along the trail, one spot we like to stop here is right here. Uh, we look for fish, frogs, turtles, and maybe if you're lucky enough, you might even see a snake over here. Don't fall in. It's down the trail a little bit. You come across this feature right here. Now there's water coming in from a little bit of drainage, but this was made by a beaver. What beaver do is they come out early in the morning and late in the evening, and they come up to shore to cut down small saplings, and instead of dragging them over land, they make these little canals where they can drag them through the water, less weight to pull, and back to where they need them. So check that out when you come by here, a beaver canal. So you're gonna go a little bit down the trail, then you're gonna to come to a point where you're gonna cross this marshy area, as you can see Justin and Rick Kraslin are doing right now. But now that they're gone, let's just take a few minutes and enjoy the peace and quiet without them. Take in all the sounds. Sometimes you might even be able to hear that frog croaking, the birds overhead. Just take a few minutes and enjoy it. You'll know you're on the trail when you come across these. Continue to follow these nice white diamonds. It's the international symbol for a trail. This is a favorite spot for you to take a family photo. It's absolutely beautiful. Sandstone rock, pine tree, Bryant Lake, the ridge behind us. Take a minute, take a photo, make a memory. This is absolutely one of the most fascinating places on this trail for me. You can see these beautiful mosses and different type of lichen. And this part of the forest is also the start of some pine trees. So you'll find beautiful aromas of pine and this bed of mosses. This is a good place to look and make some observation. I think this is called reindeer moss. I don't know, look it up. So check this out. This dead tree, it's called a snag. And they play a vital role in the forest. Even when a tree dies, it has a use. And if you notice, see these holes right here? These holes are because the tree died and insects have now invaded and the larva is in there eating the tree. And who loves to eat larva? Woodpeckers, flickers, all kind of birds. They land on here, they use their beak. And this is fresh, very fresh woodpecking and they listen. They actually hold on and listen for the larva or the grubs crunching or moving. And then they brrr, brrr. I see one here. Do you got one there? Yeah, right here. Yeah. Look for signs of the snag and the birds looking for dinner. So at the bottom of the trail where it starts to get marshy, I want you to take a look at this. This is fresh beaver sign. This was not here last summer. I know this because here are the chips and you can actually see the individual teeth marks in this stump. You know, he took a long time to get this one, but gravity did the rest. I see he's been working all around here. Their den is across the lake. But when you see this, there's one other thing to look for. Right to my right is a busted up picnic table. And it's important to know that because you're getting ready to go off trail. So you see the busted picnic table? Get ready to go off trail. We're gonna bushwhack to a special spot. As soon as you pass the old picnic table, the trail starts to go up and it actually goes about six miles this way. But we're not going that way. We're gonna do something called bushwhacking. We're gonna go on this side trail. So look for the yellow sign. Trail marker. And the bushwhacking trail this way. Make sure you turn this way or it's five miles. Hey, come on guys. Turn. <laughs> turn. And turn. You're almost at the secret spot and you notice that this trail splits. Don't go to the left. Go to the right. So you'll want to spend a lot of time right here. This little stream that drains these hills is what fills Bryant Lake. And there's some very interesting things to look for here. Some wildlife, 
if you come across a turtle, there's a turtle, a box turtle that lives here, take pictures, look at him, and let him stay. A box turtle spends his entire life within one square mile. This is his habitat. Take a look at him, leave him here. But there's some things you can find, and we're going to search for them right now. So I've been sitting here just for a few minutes, just looking to see what can I find just in this area, just these rocks just on the ground. And already, I've already found a crinoid. A crinoid is something that's from maybe 200 million years ago, but it's evidence of life. It's a fossil. And so we're going to put this here, and I'm going to put this on the ground. You can see it has just looks like a kind of like a Cheerio, and it has a hole in the center but they're all around. I'm gonna put this down and say, can you find any others? Oh, look, here's one right here. These are really small. You can see all the different crinoids that are in embedded in this rock, all evidence of life from long, long, long ago. Oh, and look, I found a friendship rock. The friendship rock has a hole in it. The friendship rock has a hole in it, and so you can put it on a string, give it to a friend, and it's now a friendship rock. In fact, in just those few minutes, I'm looking at six or seven right here. Here's one, here's two, here's another one, and here's another one, and here's one that's half of one right here. Just sitting down for just a few minutes, you can explore and find all kinds of evidence of life from the past. After you spend some time exploring and collecting crinoids and rocks and whatnot, we're going to head up the ridge and back around Bryant Lake. When you're done exploring here, it's time to head to the high side of the lake. And the trail starts right here by the, here's a marker, by the marker, by the arrow, and way down there is Mary by the bridge. Hey, Mary. Yeah. This way, guys. Push across the bridge, look for the trail marker, and head up the stairs to the high side of the lake. We're on the high side of Bryant Lake. If you look by my thumb and just past my thumb, that's that sandstone outcrop on the other side of the lake. All day long on our hike, we've been looking at activity of beavers. And while you just walk along this trail and probably just past this big pile of sticks. But this right here, we're finally finding where do the beavers live? Well, the beavers are right here. Justin's got them. He's right on top of where they're living right now. Where's the entrance? You know, the entrance, you'd have to go underground, underwater, and find it. Hey, Justin, why don't you dive in and go in? I'm okay, okay. <laughs> the okay. Other, the other marker, this is a great marker to know that you're halfway through the hike. If you look way across the way, you can see where we first started from, from the shelter. As you come to the end of the trail, there's a short stairway to go down, and then you go across the earthen dam that blocks up Bryant Creek and makes Bryant Lake. You can see Justin and Mary crossing it now, and you're gonna go right past the spillway, and you'll be at a really popular fishing area, and we'll be headed back to the shelter. So we just crossed the earthen dam. I'm here by the boat ramp. We're headed this way to get back to the shelter. Anytime you hike in Indiana, there's a couple things you wanna be aware of. One of them is it's probably going to be wet and uneven and slippery. But there's also some plants that could cause you a lot of trouble. This is the classic poison ivy. And I know it's poison ivy for three important ways. Number one, it has three leaflets. If it's three, let it be. You'll see some kind of vines that have five. That's called Virginia creeper, not poison ivy. Number two, the tendril or the way it, it adapts to climbing up a tree has little brown, they almost look like hairy little hairy tendrils. If it's hairy, it's scary. Stay away. And the third thing is that uh, the branches are alternating. They're not opposite. There's one here and here. 
a stairway to trouble. So look for those signs of poison ivy. The three leaves, if it's three, leave it be. If it's hairy, it's scary, and you don't want any stairwell to trouble. But poison ivy can also just grow on the ground. In fact, right down here at the bottom, if you take a look at this, this is a, a whole bunch of poison ivy growing, and it's, uh, it's self-supporting. It is not part of a tree, and it may never be. So you want to know poison ivy. There's three, let it be. And one of the leaves has like a little thumb on it. So look for that thumb. If it's three and the thumb sticking out, that really helps me. Now the plant next to it is three, but those leaves are toothed. And that is and a little hairy also. That's not poison ivy, but you want to avoid that. That's stinging nettle, and it gets pretty tall. Stinging nettle gets really tall. Poison ivy is the one to avoid. It's the oil, the ursula oil in it that can last a long time. But if you get poison ivy on you, or if you think you have it on, if you go home and you vigorously rub with soap, and I mean vigorously, and a washcloth, that will take care of that oil and you should be just fine. So we just finished the complete circuit of Bryant Lake. I'm back at the picnic table. Uh, Mary and Justin are with me. We saw a lot of cool things. We hope you see even more. This ends our Science Summer Safari Family and Teacher Expedition for Bryant Lake. Before you come, make sure you read up, study the maps, and be prepared for a great adventure. Let's head on back, guys. Sounds good.